Welcome to the whole nine yards. Hello, everybody. We're at the quarter pole of the 2014 season, and we've certainly accomplished a lot, but there is more to do. I'm Ralph Ventry for NEC Front Row, and I'm ready to give you the whole nine yards on week four in Northeast Conference football. Six of the seven NEC programs are in action this week. Wagner is the lone idle team. That's because head coach Walt Hamline scheduled a week four bye for the Seahawks so that he could attend his daughter's wedding. The Seahawks will be back in action on September 27th. But first, let's talk about the six teams that will be on the gridiron in week four, and let's get right to work with the no-huddle preview. We start off with the red-hot Bryant Bulldogs. Marty Fine's team is coming off its second victory over a CAA member in three weeks after stunning number 20 Maine in the final minutes of Saturday's homecoming game in Smithfield. The Bulldogs will have a chance at another statement victory this Saturday when they travel down to Big South member Liberty, which is ranked at number 24 in the Sports Network Top 25. Head coach Marty Fine knows that his team is in the midst of a challenging stretch. We have the league games start a month from now, so we need to play great against Liberty and continue to get better. Uh, we need to play well against Bucknell after that and then we have a, some downtime to get ready for St. Francis and uh, um, and and that's what we're aiming is that's our goal we don't want to lose our focus we don't want to get distracted by any of this stuff we want to continue to get better on an everyday basis. Brian's 3-0 start has had a lot to do with defense the Bulldogs have allowed just 17 points in its two wins over Stony Brook in Maine and the Bulldogs rank sixth nationally allowing only 10.3 points per contest. Offensive creativity hasn't hurt the Bulldogs either. Whether it's Jose DePadua, Rico McCray, or Chad Ward, Bryant has found a way to get the ball in its playmaker's hands in crucial situations. Next, we go to Pittsburgh, where Duquesne will host Big South member Mammoth. The Dukes certainly looked happy to be home last week, rolling to a 33-13 win over Dayton. Beekle, who exceeded the 300-yard passing mark in games at FBS member Buffalo and at nationally ranked Youngstown State, will face a stingy Mammoth pass defense Saturday. The Hawks have three interceptions in two games and allow fewer than 200 yards per contest in the air. The schedule isn't getting any easier for St. Francis and national FCS rushing leader Kahari Dixon. The Red Flash, who've already played road games at Patriot League power Fordham and CAA member James Madison, will visit Youngstown State this Saturday. The recipe for a Red Flash win? Run the ball effectively and stop the run. On the defensive side, Bishop Neal and his mates will look to bottle up YSU running back Martin Ruiz. Ruiz had a big day in a Week 2 win over NEC member Duquesne. On the offensive side, Dixon tells us about the benefits of an effective rushing attack. You know, we believe in what we, we know we can do, and we, we believe running the football controls the game, and that's what we try to do, control the game early. Thus far, no one has been able to stop Dixon and the SFU ground game. The junior running back, however, doesn't take all of the credit. Yeah, our offensive line has been playing great throughout these three games. I commend them, you know, I thank them every game, you know, that without them, I wouldn't be able to do what I'd be able to do now. And, and my saying always is Lam and lead the way. We're halfway through the week four slate. Our next matchup on the docket features a pair of regional rivals as Robert Morris visits Dayton. The Colonials will look to wash that bad taste out of their mouths following last week's disappointment at Lafayette. Robert Morris was unable to establish the run in a loss to the Leopards, and a pair of pick sixes put them in an early hole. Still in search of his first victory as a head coach, John Banizek would probably like to see his team limit the mistakes and improve its run defense when it makes the short trip to Dayton. 
a big special teams play would certainly go a long way as well. Duquesne returned a punt 84 yards in its win over Dayton. Robert Morris would like to do the same, and they have a weapon who's mightily capable of doing so. Antoine Eddy is a preseason All-American punt return man. Moving down the docket, we stop at Central Connecticut, which will visit Ivy League member Dartmouth in Week 4. The Blue Devils have lost two in a row since their headline-grabbing victory over Towson. Meanwhile, they'll face a Dartmouth team that has yet to play a game this season. The Big Green were picked number three out of eight teams in the Ivy League's preseason predicted order of finish. This will actually only be the second ever meeting between Central Connecticut and an Ivy League member. The Blue Devils won at Columbia back in 2009. In terms of the series between NEC members and Ivy League members, well, there have been 10 such meetings since 2010, with the NEC holding a 6-4 edge. Now refocusing on Saturday's matchup, Central at Dartmouth, we have to note that turnovers have bitten the Blue Devils in its last two losses. They turned the ball over seven times in the past two weeks, the Blue Devils actually outgained Holy Cross in Week 3, but were unable to translate that yardage into points. All NEC wide receiver Tyrell Holmes was the lone Blue Devil to find the end zone in Week 3. We close out the No Huddle preview with 3-0 Sacred Heart. Mark Nofri's Pioneers will once again enjoy some home cooking as they will host their fourth straight game at Campus Field. This time, they welcome the Bucknell Bison to town. Sacred Heart has already defeated one Patriot League member this year, a 27-14 win over Lafayette in Week 2. They've also won the only all-time meeting between themselves and Bucknell. It was a 16-0 shutout last year in Lewisburg. Saturday's contest will actually be a matchup of unbeatens, as Bucknell comes in at 2-0, having recorded wins over VMI and Marist. The Bison are averaging more than 30 points per victory, while Sacred Heart's stingy defense allowed just 21 points combined in two victories against FCS opponents. Which side will prevail in Week 4? Well, you'll have to watch Front Row on Saturday to find out, as that game will air live on our network. Now, after grinding through that no-huddle preview, I'm going to call a Twitter timeout. In this weekly segment, we look at one NEC football-related tweet of note. This week, it's Matt Tracy, a former all-NEC tight end from Littleton, Colorado. Tracy, like a number of other Bryant alumni, still keeps close tabs on the program. For that, Head coach Marty Fine is thankful. I'm back on that day. And, uh, I mean, there were guys that were, you know, 15 years ago they played here, and they cared so much about that performance we were able to put on that it was it's really a neat deal. And, and it's going to propel us for years and years. You know, it, they'll keep coming back, and they'll keep being involved with their, with their alma mater, which is one of the great things football brings to a campus. And now our final segment of the show, it's time for some X's and O's. We'll feature two players in this segment, one on the offensive side of the ball and one on the defensive side. Let's start on offense. It's that Bryant Bulldog, Chad Ward. The reigning NEC Offensive Player of the Week ranks third in the Northeast Conference with 207 receiving yards. Ward has helped ease the blow that Bryant took when Jordan Harris graduated last May. Of course, Harris was the all-time and still is the all-time leading receiver in Northeast Conference history. Ward, on the other hand, all he's done to start his junior season has been making big catches. He was responsible for the Bulldogs' lone touchdown in the Week 1 win over Stony Brook. And then, of course, as we know, he caught the game winner against Maine in Week 3. On the defensive side, let's focus in to Pittsburgh, Duquesne linebacker Sam Martello. This is an interesting story 
because Duquesne's linebacking core has been depleted due to injury this year. They've been without Christian Kuntz, who was an All-American pick at linebacker last year as a sophomore, and they've also lost preseason All-NEC selection Aaron Reed. The linebacking core, however, has still been productive, and one reason why, it's because of this man, Sam Martello. Martello led the team with nine tackles and a sack in the Week 3 win over Dayton. He has 21 tackles and three starts this season. Hats off to Sam Martello and the Duquesne defense for holding down the fort in some of their stars' absence. And that will do it for the whole nine yards in Week 4. I'm Ralph Ventry for NEC Front Row, reminding you to join us again next week. But before you do that, enjoy Week 4 in Northeast Conference football.